What's going on guys? My name is Jake. I'm a system administrator at MSP. And MSP is a managed service provider and these are all of the tickets that I touched yesterday. Please note, because I'm a system administrator, a tier two of sorts, people often come to me and I'm helping them out. So first I'm going to go through all of the assists that I gave and then after that we'll go through the tickets that I actually did. At MSP, we give service to other people and so the ticket load that we have is pretty relatively high and I also take on a lot of tickets myself on purpose because I get paid more to bill more hours and I want to get paid a lot. So this is everything that I did yesterday. Okay, so starting with the assists. First one, someone reached out and said, hey, I need to get a full software listing for this company. So I need all of the devices and all the softwares that are on this device. I showed them where to go, which tool to use, how to pull that report, download it as a CSV, and they can send it off. Next, I had someone reach out and they needed to find an installer to update an app. We searched everywhere. We looked in the app server, we looked in the file server, we looked on the DC, and we couldn't find this installer anywhere. The one that we found was all the old installer, and ultimately I just had to tell her to reach out to the vendor and get the new installer. Okay, the third assist, somebody needed to get into Meraki to change a Wi-Fi password, and I had to show them how to get into Meraki. Okay, so you go to portal.office.com, go to your apps, and you can go to that Meraki dashboard, and then you can change that Wi-Fi password for the different SSIDs. It's really simple, just had to show them where to go. After this, a fellow T2 reached out and had some questions about a startup script and kind of where we should put that. We discussed net logon and putting it in there and then using that for a GPO. You can also put it on a file server, but there are some permissions things going on there, so everyone has to have access in order for the GPO to apply correctly. So we discussed that for about 15 minutes, and that was that assist. The fifth assist, I believe, someone reached out needing calendar permissions changes. This one was a little bit of a weird one because the mailbox had been deleted, and the calendar wasn't the mailbox's calendar. It was one that the person whose mailbox that was had created and then shared out. And so the people didn't have permissions over the calendar. They wanted to share it out further to other people. We looked all over the place. We logged into Exchange PowerShell and we just could not figure out how to actually grant owner perms over this calendar because I couldn't find the calendar with Exchange PowerShell. The person was long gone. They were not in deleted objects and their mailbox was long gone. It wasn't converted to a shared mailbox like it should have been. And we didn't really know what to do in terms of sharing that calendar out and we just came up with another solution which was you're gonna to have to rebuild this, create a new shared mailbox with the name that you want it to and then give the permissions necessary for these people to be able to share it out. So that was a fun assist, it was interesting, it was like a investigation and we didn't end up finding it. We looked all over the place, we GPT'd as many commands as we could in Exchange PowerShell but we found a solution ultimately. The next assist was an easy one. It was just a permissions thing. Our tier one doesn't have permissions to do this. And so they reached out and I had to assist with enabling online archive for someone's mailbox. Really easy, just a click of a button. And then lastly, I had someone reach out regarding sync and how it works. There's this common misconception that AD sync syncs from 365 down to on-prem and that's not really the case. There's also a common misconception that sync has something to do with the domain and domain joining PCs, also not the case. So I explained that AD sync is unidirectional. It just syncs from on-prem up to the cloud, not vice versa. And so if you make an object in, and you edit it in the cloud, you can't edit it in the cloud actually. You have to edit it on-prem and then sync up and the changes will go up, not vice versa. Okay, we're through with all of the assists for that day. That was actually a slow day in terms of people reaching out. Usually it's every 10 minutes. Somebody's reaching out for something and I'm giving relatively easy answers to easy questions in IT space. But let's go on to the tickets that I actually did because they were significantly more difficult. Not all of them. A lot of them are just a little bit higher level. So the first two tickets I had in the morning were link down or edge down tickets. It's when somebody's SD-WAN is reporting that one of the ISP connections is not connected correctly. Really, they're relatively simple. Either you're reaching out to the ISP and saying, hey, what's going on? They're gonna tell you, reboot the modem, and then 90% of the time, that fixes the problem. Sometimes it's a little bit deeper, there are some connection issues, or something's not configured correctly, but that's really rare. So I had two of those early in the morning. I had a ticket that I've been working for a while for an org, setting up something that is an add-in in Outlook to upload documents. I'm trying to be a little bit vague, because I don't wanna give in too much information into what I'm doing. But that was relatively simple. I just had to hop onto someone's device and download the installer and send the installer, make sure that vStore was installed and everything worked correctly. So it was like 10 minutes. After this, I had another easy but common ticket, which was a drive is full on a server. So this file server's drive was 90% full. I run Winderstat, take a bunch of screenshots of things that are taking up space, tell the internal contact, hey, can we clean some of this up or do we need to add more space? 
and I'm still waiting on them. Okay, after this I had an interesting VPN ticket because the person on VPN was all the way over in India and we didn't have a local admin on the account and they were having troubles getting into their VPN. I didn't know what we were gonna do because this device didn't have laps. We didn't have a local admin. We couldn't access the device using domain admin creds because obviously they aren't on the domain. They were over in India and I didn't know what to do. Somehow miraculously, they got on VPN for a small moment. The second they got on VPN, I went in and made a local admin on the device and then we troubleshot VPN, changing things and ethernet properties. We were troubleshooting everything from client side DNS, all these ethernet properties, Wi-Fi, hotspot, VPN itself. I was working with the data center team. I was working with these gentlemen in India who were actually super lovely to work with and we troubleshot like crazy. At the end of the day, we finally got him on VPN. I kept the local admin on the device and now I'm just on standby. Everything's working for now, but that was a crazy ticket. It was like hours of going around, clearing VPN profiles, reinstalling VPN clients, changing those adapter properties. So it was like an interesting ticket. I'm a little bit, how should we say? I'm done with it, over it. I want it to go away, but it was a good, interesting ticket where I had to have a lot of knowledge of client side DNS. We did network resets. We were changing a bunch of different settings. It was half troubleshooting VPN and half troubleshooting their internet, which is always interesting, especially when someone's super far away and you don't have access to the domain. Fortunately, I got that local admin and I was able to tell them what to do over the phone. Okay, after this we had a security camera ticket, which I always try and take because I take as many networking and cloud tickets as I can because that's what I want to learn and get really good at. Basically, I think this company had moved cameras from one location to the other and they were not on the correct VLAN and not on the correct subnet. So they had IP addresses that weren't within the subnet that they were supposed to be within. I had a 45 minute call with the internal contact, we discussed subnetting, we discussed first available IP, last available IP, because there's a little bit of confusion there. We discussed how different subnets work at different branches that are peered to each other. And for example, we can't have two of the same subnet at two different branches because there would be IP conflicts and things wouldn't work correctly. We discussed all of this in depth. I was in the switches, I was running, checking MAC address tables, seeing where I can see cameras, seeing where I can't see cameras, which was a lot of what it was. Ultimately, I think we're gonna have to get these cameras IP addresses changed to the correct subnet. I'm fairly certain they're static IP addresses, not DHCP. So we're gonna probably have to have the vendor do that. But it was a really interesting ticket. I got to teach networking and I also got to practice networking, reconciling against the network diagram that we have and what he was saying and what I could see there. Speaking of network diagrams, after this I had two network diagram tickets. One was just removing Wi-Fi for a location, super easy, five minutes, donezo. The other one was verifying a network diagram for a company that has tons of locations, 18 locations. And so I started going through those and reconciling everything against what we have in our managed systems. It's a lot of work, it's easy. Probably did that for an hour. After this, I had a call with another internal contact because they are having network latency issues. However, nobody's actually reporting issues. It is the Ubiquity portal that's reporting issues. And I'm inclined to think that it is a Ubiquity issue and not a network issue because I've run speed tests. I've checked the SD-WAN device. I've checked everything in terms of connection speed at the edge of network and everything looks fine. So I'm thinking it's a Ubiquity thing. I have more work to do on that, but that's tomorrow's problem. I closed out a ticket yesterday for a lady whose monitor was like pulsing. Like it was weird, it was like pulsing in and out and it was bothering her right when she started every day. Probably spent three hours total on that ticket, updating drivers, checking everything, making sure things are up to date. I have no idea what ultimately fixed it. We had changed out monitors twice and the second change of monitors actually worked. So, you know, it's one of those tickets that's just, I don't know why it was fixed but I'm happy that it's gone. Okay, and then I had a T1 reach out with a forward rule, an exchange management forward rule, which these will pop off alerts when somebody makes a rule forwarding their email to another email. Basically, we just have to check, hey, is this forwarding internally or is it forwarding externally? Because if it's forwarding externally, we could have some issues in terms of data loss and stuff like that. And so we just wanna look into it, make sure that nothing malicious is going on. Almost all the time, nothing malicious is ever going on. That was the case this time. All I had to do was go in, Microsoft compliance, review the parameters of the alert, see that everything was internal and dismiss the alert. It was pretty easy. Okay, and then towards the end of the day, I had a discussion with a network engineer about those VLANs and cameras that we were discussing. We talked about we talked about the separate VLANs, just confirming what my thoughts were, and I think we're on the right page. And then also just how he's actually scanning for these cameras because we saw that he was scanning for them and was able to see them, but they had IPs that were not on that same subnet. Some wonky stuff going on, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. And then lastly, towards the end of the day, I got to do an SSL cert for a company. An SSL cert is basically a cert that you put on a server that's serving like a website, for example, that will give you the little lock at the top of the screen. It makes a secure connection. It uses public key infrastructure. It's pretty deep. It would take me 
a whole 30 minute video to try and explain SSL, but we had all kinds of problems with this cert. First, we bought the wrong cert. I should say the internal contact bought the wrong cert. He bought a managed cert as opposed to an unmanaged cert, a standard cert. So we made our CSR, finally got the right one ordered after a couple of calls with him, tried verifying it using DNS. Didn't work, found that DNS was hosted somewhere else, couldn't get in because I didn't have creds. A lot of working with internal contacts, finally got into DNS and it wouldn't verify correctly and it wouldn't give me the actual cert. And it was super frustrating. It was a few hours and I just left it at that. We'll see this weekend. DNS takes a little bit to propagate, takes a little bit of time. If I'm able to actually verify the domain, download the cert, get it to where it needs to be. It's a long process, but so that was a large portion of my day yesterday was a couple hours of working on that cert. That's like the average day for me as a sysadmin. I might do more networking stuff some days. I might take some P1s other days. I still do a little bit of end user stuff and a lot of my day is helping out T1s who reach out and need help on something. And honestly, that's my favorite part of the job is just like helping out other people. I was a teacher before I did this and getting to teach a little bit is nice. Let me know if you have any questions. If you want more videos like this, I can certainly share. It seems like a lot to go on in one day, but with the experience that I have, I've been doing this for, I think, nine months. It's like a nice flow. Like, I just go ticket to ticket and keep myself busy during the day. And fortunately, I get to work from home and I always have my coffee, so I'm happy. Appreciate you guys. Have a good rest of your day.